Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Manu here, your yoga biz mentor. In today's video, I'd like to share with you some tips for working on the about section on your website. When you are talking about yourself, when you are sharing your own story, it is really, really important that you are intentional. And this is why I recorded this video today. I want to give you some tips that I think are going to be super helpful and valuable for you. Remember that you can talk about yourself not only in the about section of your website, but perhaps you also want to do a shorter version of it in a social media post, introducing yourself to your people, to your followers, to the people that are part of your community online, or also reintroducing yourself because perhaps most of the people know you already, but remember that there might be some other people in the community that might be joining in later. So having a clear way and having understanding of on how and what to tell when you speak about yourself and your own story, it's a really important thing that can make a huge difference. And that's why I'm recording this video for you today. I hope you find a lot of value. So let's dive in. But why does this matter? Okay, here's the thing. People love the story behind a brand, a business, or in your case, a person. Sharing your own story provides an opportunity to establish a connection with your community and the people that find you online. If talking about you feels intimidating, let me just right away take some weight out of your shoulders and tell you that when you are talking online you are not talking about yourself you are not talking about who you are what you are talking about it's your ideal student or client you want them to see themselves in your own journey you want them to relate to your own past struggles and to really feel and know that you get them before we continue, allow me to clarify a few things about sharing yourself and your own personal story online. When I talk about sharing your own story online, sharing it on social media or in the about section of your website, I'm not talking about the nitty gritty details of your own personal life or the struggles you might be facing right now. Those, you don't have to share them online, unless, of course, you want to. What I'm referring to here is to your past struggles. Those struggles you have before you came in contact with yoga or your own wellness practice. Those struggles which are more manageable or you have overcome them today. Does that make sense? And so what to consider when talking about you online. And today I'm going to share 10 aspects to consider with you. Actually, 10 plus one. And let's go right away and dive in into the plus one. And the plus one is that when you share your own story, when you are talking on social media or when you are writing your about page and you are talking about your own personal story, you want to talk in first person. The next thing I want you to be is very intentional. Decide what part of the story, of your story, you want to tell. And of course, I'm not telling you here to make things up. I'm going to never tell you to, to make up stories. But I want you to reflect about those parts of the story your students or your clients can relate today. And for that, it's really important that you consider the, their dreams and their desires. See how can you relate to your ideal student and clients and how through the, your story, your ideal students and clients can relate to you. Okay, point number two here is to share your I help statement or your mission post. If you don't know what an I help statement is, you can find a link in the description of this video where you can access a free masterclass that it will help you creating your I help statement. Creating an I help statement will allow you to connect with your ideal students and clients 
faster and better. The idea here is to let people know what you stand for. So this helps them decide if you are the teacher they need, the teacher or the coach they are looking for. By doing so, you are being respectful with other people's time. When they find you on social media, when they find your website, it is important for them to know right away if you are the person, if you are the professional, that it's going to be able to help them. The next point is to keep your introduction, to keep your story short and sweet. <laughs> Let's be real here because being succinct, it's not one of the things that I know do best. I struggle sometimes being succinct. So with that being said, be concise and let's move to the next point. And the next point is about doing your text and your writing clear, spacious and breathable or readable so that people don't feel it's a lot of text and they are never going to read that. In order to make this more readable, you can consider adding spaces between paragraphs to make it uh, more spacious or even adding bullet points for clarity. Okay, let's move on to the next point. And the next point, it's all about the emotion. Please don't hold back on, expression, on expressing emotion and on telling your readers how you felt during your past struggles. And the reason behind it's because we are emotional beings and we really, really, really get to connect with emotion. We get to connect with people through emotion. So don't be afraid to express that. Moving on to the next point, express your unique voice. I like you to share your story in an authentic way. And of course, let your personality shine. Be it humor, inspiration, introspection, whatever that is that you are, just infuse that in your voice and make your story compelling and relatable. The next point is to show up your face. Your face, someone said this before, yeah? Your face is the most beautiful and powerful logo and people really connect with people. So let people connect with you by showing up your, by showing up your face in a photo, in an image, on social media, when you do an introduction post or in your about page. The next point is to infuse your hero's journey, okay? Tell your people how you overcame the obstacles your ideal student or client is facing right now. How do you manage to overcome those? The next point is about the certification. I know you love to include all of the certifications and all of the studies that you have done, but actually what I would recommend you is to include them on a separate section. When reading your about page, people are more interested in your story than your credentials at this point. So don't worry so much about your credentials, have them there, but don't think people are gonna go there and really, really look about them because they will connect with you more on a personal level. And finally, today's final point is to include a clear call to action. At the end of your about page, let people know what's the next step. You can invite them to join your email list or you can invite them to work with you. If you are posting on social media and you are talking about yourself, you can as well invite people, same thing, just to join your email list or to work with you or some other call to action that you desire to do at that moment. These are the 10 plus one tips that I wanted to share with you today when writing about yourself in your about page on your website or on a social media post. I hope these are helpful. Please let me know in the comments. I'm always super happy to hear from you. And if you like to keep learning from me, I really invite you to join my newsletter. You can do so by joining the free masterclass uh, below linked in this uh, in the description of this video. And this is it for today. 
Uh, uh, it was nice to spend this time with you, and I hope to catch up with you uh, sometime soon. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.